first uh, okay um well so first we'll uh, we'll have to con continue the discussion of the action of sl2 um and, and conclude it in fact on the chowering of an abelian variety Uh, and then we're, we're going to start with this topic about the representation of the diagonal. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so let me quickly um, recall the setting we had last time for, for an abelian variety. So A was principally polarized. So we start with number one. So we have principally polarized um, over the complex numbers, dimension G. And here is the polarization we denoted it by L, the principal polarization. So we also had the Poincaré line bundle, which we viewed on A times A. We explained that normally, of course, it's uh, uh, naturally sits on A times uh, the dual abelian variety, but we identified so we had identified um, A with its dual using the using the polar the principal polarization. Okay, and so the, our main um, well the main the main tool here was this theorem of Mukai. Um, so well, let's so we consider the. Uh, um, functor from the derived category of A to itself. Uh, so which to a class alpha associates, well, you just twist with the kernel given by the Poincaré um, line bundle, yeah? So defined as, okay, so so then the main result was that um, what was that F is an equivalence and its inverse is essentially itself, yeah? So um, more precisely, where well, there's a shift and there's this uh, involution, which is multiplication by minus one, okay? Um, so we said also that we may view this, of course, on Chow. F, so this is Mukai's theorem. And we may view F on the Chow of the abelian variety. Um, and here, of course, uh, the result is that the composition, well, there's the uh, there's the same involution that appears, the multiplication by minus one pull back under. And of course there's a, the shift becomes a sign minus one to the G. And of course here F is defined as push forward of, so, okay, I'm sorry. So F applied to a Chow class alpha, push forward of, alpha intersected with the churn character of the Poincaré line bundle. So we said, okay, let's call lambda the first churn class. So, uh, so this is in this case, the functor. Um, okay, so we also had, if we were work, working with these important maps, uh, let me just mention them quickly. We had the addition map from A cross A to A, and we had the multiplication by N map. Uh, just to, because this will come up immediately. So just uh, reminding you. Okay, so we did one calculation uh, with the Fourier Mukai functor last time. And we said, well, so well, we calculated that um, if we compose this equivalence with the 
operation, which is tensoring by the polarization. Okay. Uh, and we cube it. This was equal to um, just a shift by minus G, so almost the identity. Okay. Um, and so, so I guess we have these two. Yeah, so we have these two main identities, both due to Mukai. He actually does this calculation explicitly in his, in his sort of in, in his classic paper. So then this this suggests um, um, suggests the, the action of SL two Z, right? So um, with SL two Z now, of course, we we're looking at um, standard generators here. So we have we let S be this. Okay, um, and we know they generate SL two Z, of course, subject to these relations, which we see satisfied. So this, so we're of course tempted to say, well, T in our case to have a representation on Chow uh, is the the operation of multiplying uh, of a. Uh, uh, tensoring, well, actually we're here on the derived category. So if I'm on Chow, let me actually, yeah, I apologize. Um, this is multiplication by e to the theta, okay? Where theta is the first chunk class of the polarization. Um, and S, well, it's almost, you see, it almost, we said, since there's, there's a, um, since there's a minus, um, uh, normally, I mean, if, if this were to work exactly that we could assign S to F, um, uh, you, you're missing a minus, uh, um, uh, you're, you're missing the pullback by the involution. So in fact, um, it's not F, but rather this F tilde, which is F composed with minus one star that plays the role of, uh, of S, you know, SL to Z. Okay, so then, then you have it, and the, 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 um, uh, then this, this identity works, works well. Okay, so, um, so we have also seen one last thing that we did was that um, we have also seen that um, the matrix um, so the lower triangular matrix which is is calculated as t times s times t um, is represented by well, by the composition, the triple composition of tensoring with L, applying um, applying F and tensoring with L. And this again, we calculate it to be just um, the Pontryagin product with L, okay? So it's sort of, it's a beautiful picture. So what this means in Chow, so if in Chow then, um, we have that this matrix acts as follows. You send the class alpha to push forward under the addition map of um, so you pull back uh, alpha from one factor. So here M is from A cross A to A, the projections are P and Q. Um, e to the theta, which is the churn character of, of the polarization L, and you push forward under the addition map. Okay. Um, so yeah, I hope all this all this is this is good so far, and uh, this is this is the um, so this 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 establishes this SL two Z action on the on the Chow of uh, of A. Okay. 
And so at the same time, I also said something about the child decomposition. So let me, yeah, just, um, so we does have an SL2Z action. And let me say also something about the child decomposition. Um, CH stuff, right? Um, um, so this starts again with, with the Mukai's theorem. So, so for child decomposition, what we saw very kind of in a very elementary way last time was that this identity uh, was in the right-hand side is essentially the identity leads to a, decom to a decomposition of the diagonal class inside. So this is A cross A, but of course as a, into eigen, so this is viewed as a correspondence as that sort of the identity correspondence diagonal decomposes into a sum of eigen correspondences for um, the operation of multiplication by N pullback under multiplication by N on one factor. Okay. Um, so, so then, so then this gives this Boville decomposition of the of the Chow. into eigen spaces so this is the this is co-dimension p here so cycles of co-dimension p there's a range for this so they're, they're labeled for, there's a range for the possible eigen values which are easy i won't insist but this is something easy to see so here star of alpha okay so so these are eigen spaces for for n, n star okay and i should say also that what something that i didn't point out it's obvious but I, I i think i omitted to point out last time is that this decomposition is multiplicative you know which is which is a nice feature feature because um products are well just because products are well behaved under pullback Right, so so we have here yeah, under uh, under multiplication. I mean, I mean intersection of cycles. Um, okay. So then on the level of correspondences, we also have um, you know, we can view this upper operator, which is very important. It will make up, um, you know, it, it, it will be quite present in, um, in the first part of our lecture. This um, pullback under multiplication by N is immediate that it's written as follows, as a, as a combination of these um, linear combination of these um, eigen correspondences. You know, with, these, uh, with these coefficients, okay? All right. So this is, this is uh, just a, a quick recap of where we were. So let me now Continue and we, because we like to see this also on a Lie algebra level, not just on a group level. Okay, so first we're gonna, so we, we still have a little bit of work to do. Um, okay, so we have now, 
So we have now a representation. This is where we are, and here is what we want, phi from SL to Z, so the automorphism group of, okay? So we'd like to extend it to, I'll call it also phi SL to Q, two. okay? So, so we're, let's define it. So we'll, we'll start slowly. There isn't so much to do really, just a couple of elements to, to make sure that, that we have this. Um, so let's uh, define it first on, uh, on upper triangular matrices. Yeah, so, um, so first work with, well, let's say the group of upper triangular matrices here inside SL. Okay, well, so it's not so hard. I mean, you if we take a matrix of this form, what should the operation on Chow be? Well, we know when A is one, it was E to the theta, it's multiplication by E to the theta. So this is just gonna be multiplication by E to the A theta. Yeah? This is where it gets sent. So now we have to worry a bit about diagonal matrices. So for N in Z, let's say, and this is, this is the new element in some sense. So where do you, where do you send, what, what is the diagonal matrix represented by? And we're declaring it to be just the pullback under the multiplication by N with this prefactor N to the minus G, which means that the inverse matrix Well, should go to n to the minus g, this normalization factor, uh, times the operation of push forward under multiplication by n, right? Because we have seen this, we mentioned that, of course, n lower star and upper star is n to the 2g times the identity. Yeah? So this makes sense. Um, yeah, so um, now to have a well-defined representation, so to, to have a well-defined uh, phi from, from B to the automorphism of Chow, we also, we just need to check the basic relation of how these commute, yeah? So you need to check on the level of the operators we defined, So we like to see this happen, right? I mean, we, um, so, um, and it's enough to do it for an integer n, yeah? I mean, I, it's a polynomial identity, so it's enough to check it like this. Okay, so what does, so in fact, with our definitions, what we need is the following, that composing Oh, I'm sorry. Then you multiply by into the a theta. And finally, this is push forward. If we apply this to a cycle alpha, this should give, it should be the same as applying this operator. In other words, multiplication by this exponential to alpha. Yeah, so for some, any cycle. Okay, so we need to check to so have this basic compatibility. Well, so what does this mean? We can, I mean, here, what the only thing since I'm applying, we're applying this pullback, which behaves well uh, under multiplication. So the main thing to remember here is that the pullback of theta under n, under, uh, n is n squared, returns n squared theta. Okay, so then, then this thing follows, so this is, equivalent, so what we like to see is that, well, so we have n to the minus two g, e to the n squared a theta,
And this indeed is the same as multiplying by the exponential. Okay, so this checks. Okay, so that's, it's okay. It, it, it works well. And of course, it's important to remember this. And I, I mentioned this, uh, uh, this, uh, this property of theta. In fact, the, these are things worked out by Mumford. I mean, how line bundles behave. I mean, you, you can write the pullback of any line bundle under, under the mul multiplication uh, uh, by n map. And in case the line bundle is symmetric, um, it is sent to um, uh, L is sent to L to um, L to the n squared, right? So on the level of first churn classes, you see this identity. So so that's that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to use S to generate. So since we have it on on all upper triangular matrices, now we we're going to use our um, SL two generator S to to move to the uh, to lower triangular matrices, and in fact, um, we can generate it, but again, we have to check one compatibility. So to extend to now phi from SL to Q, so we want to have also lower triangular matrices, of course. Um, We also need to check the following basic relation in SL2. So it has to do again with the diagonal matrices. So this is S. So we need to show that this gives the inverse. Okay, so we need to check that this basic SL2 relation is satisfied. And I mean, there's an argument to be made that it's sufficient. Certainly it's, you want this to be satisfied, but it's actually sufficient. And um, yeah, okay. So, well, let's see what this means, what this translates into here for us. Um, well, um, so in other words, we want that Well, this is what S is represented by, the simply the Fourier Mokai functor with this additional twist by the multiplication by minus one. And here we have, let's write it as S in F inverse, right? This is. Um, and this should be equal to just the push forward under N. Right, so then if we um, just shift this to the other side, what this is equivalent to is the following well-known property of the Fourier Mukai functor f, that uh, um, if so this is, if you have an isogeny, um, the Fourier Mukai functor com composed with pullback under the isogeny is the same as the push forward under the isogeny composed with Fourier Mukai. So this is okay for the isogeny n. So it works out well. Um, so I just moved F to the other side. I mean, just a trivial manipulation. All right. So yeah. So this would be this would be it. But of course, now we'd like to calculate. So the, just the basic compatibility of the the ways of these operators as we define them actually leads to, an, to a representation of SL to Q. Um, and now we have already seen just to deduce what the Lie algebra action is. So, so finally, so this is the last point. So, um, well, we have already seen that um, the lower triangular matrix one zero one one is 
alpha goes to the Pontryagin product of alpha with e to the theta. But we'd like to calculate now for an arbitrary. So we're going to calculate this in particular. Um, what this operator is, multiplica uh, multiplication by this matrix. And what we're going to have to compose, this is the last, the one calculation we're doing. It's a very simple one. Uh, yeah, it's OK. So, OK, so we have to, OK, so then multiplication by a lower triangular matrix like this is in fact this, this following composition. Again, I'm using our definition of the operators, push forward by N. Uh, this is Pontryagin product with e to the theta, and this is pullback by N. Okay. So in other words, this is n to the minus 2g, push forward, compose with Pontryagin product, compose with pullback. OK. So, so what we're saying is that alpha goes to, so this is some, some random Chow class. Just using the definition, yeah. This is we're un unraveling here what this means. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. Well, so this the feeling is this is some sort of a um, Pontryagin product as well, but which one exactly? So. Let's just to address this, uh, this double push forward. So first by the addition map, then by the multiplication by n map. Oops, well, why don't I continue with this? Um, so obviously, so you start with x, y here, and I want to end up with n times x plus y here in this corner. So you can either multiply by n, n, and apply the addition map, or apply the addition map and multiply by n. So it's, it's commutes. Um, so then, um, so then I, I, I just, Calculate. I use this diagram to 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 reverse a bit here the order. So this is. I would like to. So this this will indicate that there's a Pontryagin product going on, and then I'll just have to contend with the um, expressing calculating the push forward, but that's that's going to be easy. So I'll, I'll do sort of this artificial thing that I will I express here. Um, this e to the theta is a push forward under, I'm sorry, as a pullback under n. OK. So that it's the expression is symmetric since I have pullback under n for alpha. OK. And then I have here the advantages now that I have this here. I have the pull, pull push forward under n multiplication by n on both factors, followed applied to the pull back of multiplication by n on both factors. And um, this is simply okay.
Okay, so the result of doing this is an n to the factor of n to the four g. Because now we're, we're, we're in a billion variety of dimension 2g, namely a times a. So overall, I have a factor n to the 2g and simply this Pontryagin product. Okay. So in other words, oh, alpha goes to n to the 2g multiplying the Pontryagin, Pontryagin product with e to the theta over n squared, okay? So then I conclude that, okay, so I, I worked this out because it was convenient for n squared, but of course what this means is if I want a general expression for a lower triangular matrix of this sort, the corresponding operator is, well, there's this scaling factor of a to the g, times the Pontryagin product with e to the theta over a. So when a is equal to one, which we did before, which is really, you have the Pontryagin product with e to the theta, okay? Right. So this is, so at this moment we're done. We just have to look at the, for, for to deduce the Lie algebra generators, we just have to look at the first order in a. Yeah, so let me write. Um, okay, also, so let's, let's see everything that's relevant. So let's one A zero one was just multiplication by E to the A theta. And finally, N zero zero N inverse was or n in z, right? Um, so in other words, this is on the level of correspondences is this correspondence. Okay. Um, so then, so the non Lie algebra level, Um, so for X, we have, this is just multiplication by theta. Yeah. So it's intersection with a, with a um, ample, ample uh, uh, divisor theta. Now for Y, Ah, I'm sorry. This is, um, yeah, so here is what it is. I have to uh, track the first, uh, the, the term linear in A. So this is just a Pontryagin product with theta to the G minus one over G minus one factorial. Okay, so I have to look at um, order a to the g minus one in the exponential uh, because of this prefactor a to the g. Yeah, so it looks a little worse on the algebra level, and then of course with h, I have if alpha is a if I apply to a, a an eigenvector uh, under um, under our in, in our decomposition. Um, so this alpha, let's say, is in cycle of co-dimension P with eigenvalue given by 2P minus S. Then what we get here is 2P minus G. This is this minus G we see here. Minus S times alpha. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is the SL2 algebra acting. So what we see is that, is that the Chow decomposition under N star is also the eigenspace decomposition of H in fact, yeah? 
um, the chow decomposition under this multiplication by n pullback is the eigenspace decomposition of the operator H. Okay. So just, uh, I'll just pause to comment a bit for, for a second. Of course, you know, this is, I mean, the most interesting operator here and we worked hardest for it is of course this Y, right? I mean, because um, what X does, I mean, this, this operation of um, intersecting with an ample, ample divisor is very, okay, it's sort of very expected in algebraic geometry. It's very natural. But, but this, what this Y has to achieve is to, uh, so this increases co-dimension. You start with a cycle and you, know, you increase its co-dimension by one. But of course the operator Y has to undo that. So Y decreases the co-dimension. Yeah, so that's actually a lot more subtle to have, uh, it's, it's harder in algebraic geometry to have operations on cycles which, which, uh, which decrease co-dimension. Yeah? And this is what this does, because if you look at this uh, convolution with theta to the G minus one, of course, this is a class of, um, uh, of co-dimension G minus one, but you're also pushing forward under the, um, the addition map. So that's a dimension G fiber. So in fact, you achieve that. Um, yeah, so, uh, so, so, right. But we had to we had to sort of work a little bit for it, and I wanted to just do it. I mean, of course, it's very elementary, but it's actually pleasant calculations within an abelian variety. If you you know, I don't know if you <laughs> they're enjoyable calculations to do because there's a lot of structure. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Can you say again how you find what y alpha is? I didn't understand that. Like, why y alpha is what you wrote down. Ah, well, because I know what e to the y is, so to speak. Yeah, you see, I know we know on group level. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, so this, I obtained it from this. Okay. So I just, it's, uh, so this is the one parameter. If you view it as a one parameter, uh, subgroup in your um, in, in your in your group it's it's in the the, the, the derivative is will give you um, uh, will give you the Lie, the corresponding Lie algebra direction yeah so just by the correspondence so then I I just looked at the first order in I picked picked out the first order in a in this expression okay. expand, expand the exponential yeah so um, yeah yeah so um, well, so, but the point is the, the, and of course, then you, you can do something and, you know, I invite, I think it's instructive to read Boville's, uh, so here my exposition mostly follows Boville's, but the calculations, everyone has their own way to do the calculations are mine because everybody calculates a little bit differently, but um, um, the point is that he also expresses a bit what this action is, I mean, for example, when is multiplication by powers of theta? Is this a, you expect it to be a bijective map or an injective map? And he's sort of on chow level. Because what we know is that on cohomology, if we now sort of step back and um, look on, on cohomological level, this gives an, um, a left sheds SL2 on the cohomology of A, yeah? So this is, you know, it's multiplication by an ample divisor theta. So this is this is from this is the the hard left shed setup in cohomology, and there also you know of course it's uh, so this y is the left shed uh, dual so to speak, uh, and okay you know in we know it's or in elementary Keller geometry I mean this this is always constructed using the metric right I mean but we're in so when you do these calculations it's it's independent of the Keller metric, but you construct it using the Keller metric. Uh, so that's why in algebraic geometry on natural, you know, beautiful spaces such as an abelian variety, you know, or a moduli space of sheaves, you like to see this um, intrinsically in terms of the structure. You'd like to have an explicit expression for this one, an explicit expression for this SL2 action. Uh, and, and here, this was sort of a kind of a, a, 
it's a prime example for an abelian variety that 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 can be done you know so um yeah and and also i should say that so in other settings let me just make this as a remark here um So when we don't have, of course, we're not gonna have this multiplication by N in other settings, right? So in the absence of this, morphism, which is available on an abelian variety, but not otherwise, we can still look though at the eigen decomposition of H in a left shed SL2 triple. Yeah, so that's that's okay. As long as you have, you manage to lift this action to see it on Chow level, or for that matter, even on cohomology, but, uh, you know, defined uh, in terms of natural classes, you know, but yeah. But on Chow, for sure, it enriches your understanding of the Chow of the chowering because you have this extra finer structure, yeah. Um, yeah, so this, I would say this, um, this ends the discussion that I, you know, had in mind of, a, of, a, of this SL2 action on a billion variety. And, you know, further, as I said, the re main references for these are, you know, Mukai's paper and also um, a few papers, a few of Boville's paper, who which follow this thread, you know, exactly making this action explicit. And they're, both these sources are very clear and very beautifully written. So it's basically, there's no obstruction to learning this very well. Um, yeah, okay. So now uh, if this is okay, I will, uh, I will move on to talk a, a bit about the diagonal. And you know, why, how does this, it seems like, uh, well, you know, it's completely unrelated to what we're saying. It's not quite unrelated. I mean, with the identity, we view it as some sort of, is the identity, uh, with the diagonal, we view it as the identity operator. So if we, we, we try to <laughs> work our way, you know, and, and try to understand first the identity operator in terms of um, the available structure in a moduli space. So, you know, we'll, and even here, you saw that is the composition of the, this child decomposition arises from, from viewing the diagonal as the um, um, composition of correspondences given by the Fourier Mukai functor. Yeah, so, so it does arise from a, rep a representation of, of the diagonal in some sense. Okay, so um, let's start here. And um, yeah, so I want to do this in, I, I was thinking of doing this in two simple settings first, uh, which are, well, well, the first one is uh, well, essentially very well known. I'll just recap it. But the second one is also simple, but not quite as simple. So the first one is to talk about the Grassmannian of R planes in CN. And the second thought is to look at um, um, a quote scheme, which is, I'll explain. Um, on P1, right? So it's the simplest, in, in some ways, simplest quote scheme you can imagine on the projective line. So this is the set of short exact sequences so this is on p1 and this e has rank minus r and degree i'm sorry rank r and degree minus d that's what i meant um, um and so yeah so let's let's if this is okay with you, let's, let's start. 
Um, so, so with one. Um, yeah, so here with the diagonal, so I have to look at two copies. So I'll, you'll see immediately what I have in mind and this will sort of clarify, although you might be bored by, by this discussion. Um, uh, so I want to look at the diagonal in a product, two copies of GRN. Okay. And here, of course, copy one and copy two, let's say. Um, and each of them has comes with a tautological sequence. So you have, let me fix. So this is just the tautological sequence on the grass manual. Um, yeah, so what I want to do here for the diagonal, I'm, um, I will consider uh, the vector bundle. Which is home of S1 into Q2 on the product. Okay, so in other words, this is S1 dual tensor Q2. Okay. Um, so S1 is on the first factor and um, is pulled back from the first factor, and Q2 is the quotient bundle from the second factor. Um, and so here, there is a tautological section of this. So there's a section sigma, tautological section of this bundle. So if you, so over a point, which is given by uh, V1 in CN, let's say the quotient is W1 and V2. W2, so this is a point, sigma, this point is, well, it's the map from V1 to W2, which is the composition, right? So I first, I have the first inclusion and then we have the second projection, let's call, let's call it eta. And so you compose to and you get a homomorphism from V1 to W2, therefore exactly you land in the fiber point, yeah? So it's a tautological section. So the um, good property for us of this section is that it, it um, vanishes. So if we're looking at the zero locus of S, well, when does this vanish? Well, when, precisely when in fact you're talking about the same quotient. Yeah, otherwise there's, so, so Z of S is precisely the diagonal. Yeah? So only if you have, uh, if you pick the same subspace on both sides, will you end up with just this morphism will evaluate to zero from B1 to W2, okay? So, um, yeah, so, so then at the same time, this is a vector bundle of rank R times N minus, let me call it W. Okay, so W on GRN, GRN has rank R times N minus R and has this tautological section sigma, which vanishes precisely along the diagonal, which is co-dimension R times N minus R. So in fact, the diagonal is given by the top churn class of this W. Okay, so we conclude that the class of the diagonal is the um, top churn class of W. Okay. So is the top churn class of this tensor product. And of course you can write this as um, 
uh, you know, you can decompose, you can write it as a, as, a, as a polynomial in turn classes of S1 and turn classes of S2. So, um, and that, that has the following consequence that, um, well, it establishes two things immediate at once, namely that, first of all, the Chow of the Grassmannian is the same as the Comolge. In other words, the Grassmannian is what we call on calls Chow trivial. Um, and also that the churn classes of S generate uh, multiplicatively the cohomology of the Grassmannian or, uh, and, or the Chow, however you want to view it. Okay, so maybe I should have said this in, um, um, yeah, so let me maybe just have a remark here on this, yeah, so just so that we don't leave it. Oh. So let's write this remark, general remark. So, so let's say that M is a non-singular complete variety. Um, and and say that the class of the diagonal inside M times M is written as uh, decomposes as a, a sum of um, contributions, products from each factor, pullbacks from each factor. So, okay, for some index set you know? uh, here. Okay, so let, let's say that this is satisfied. We've just seen that in the case of the diagonal, it's possible to, to do this. Um, so then the observation here, this remark is that this then the set alpha i generate the chow as a Z module, so additively. Okay, and this is simply the fact that if I take any class X, I mean, it's the, the diagonal is the identity operator. So this in fact is further So this is a coefficient you know, against the fundamental class. So it's a linear combination of these alpha s. Okay. And of course, if you see here also that if um, x is numerically trivial, then the intersection with every beta uh, uh, is zero, that it actually implies that it's trivial in Chow. Yeah. So it's a small step. The same if you if you choose to look in homology, you in you you do, draw the same conclusion. And in fact, um, um, you immediately deduce that uh, rational equivalence uh, is the same as uh, um, uh, equivalence on the level of homology. Yeah, so in fact, um, so it's easy to see then that this cycle class map from Chow to cohomology is an isomorphism. Okay. And moreover, if you don't have this decomposition on the level of Chow, but you ha have it on the level of homology, you still you still conclude in the same manner that you know um, these classes which appear in the diagonal expression, these alphas do generate uh, the, the cohomology ring. Okay. Yeah, so that's it's a, it's a it's a simple observation, but it's it, it helps with uh, uh, yeah. Well, if you if one manages to express the diagonal in terms of the available structure, then you can draw some nice conclusions. So now I was going to go on to. Are there any questions about this? I mean, I I apologize that yeah, maybe it's this discussion is too elementary. I, I'm not sure. So. Um, 
Um, but anyway, I wanted to discuss this less elementary uh, um, example, which is the quote scheme on, on, on P1. Um, however, I'm, I see I'm exactly at the five o'clock mark. And uh, so let me, yeah, maybe. Um, so I, so here we fix R and N. So we fix these parameters that we think of them as fixed. And, um, and then I just, um, I just think of this degree as varying. So this, so that this QD, as I said, is this quote scheme. Um, so the kernel has rank R, the quotient has rank N minus R, and this R could be anything between one and N. Um, Right, so there is, in this case also, there is a, so the first thing that one, what sort of a variety is this? So the first observation here is that, of course, it's a projective variety, but um, the, it's easy to see that this is non-singular. Of dimension. So notice that when the degree is actually zero, this is a constant map from E to CN and you actually have the, just the Grassmannian in this case. So the Q zero is just the Grassmannian GRN. Okay, so, but then things change. So, so how do, um, um, yeah, so how do we see this? Well, we just have to calculate. It's just about calculating a little bit. Um, so the tangent, as it is the case with any quote scheme, the tangent at, at the point of the quote scheme, the um, tangent space is given by x to zero of e into f. Okay. And um, the, then the obstructions lie in X one, but as we'll see in this case, this group is actually zero. Okay, so let's see this quickly, and maybe I'll I'll stop. I won't finish the discussion. I'll just spend two more minutes just so that we get a bit familiar with the space. Uh, yeah. So how do you see that this is zero? Well, you chase a bit the exact sequences. I mean, it's not hard, and let's see what's involved actually. What what it depends on. So, so I, you know, starting with this, so we're gonna take X of E into, um, into this complex, yeah? So let's see what we get on the level of uh, global, this global X. So I get zero. The smoothness is something very special in this case. And that, that's this little argument will, I mean, it's, it's worth it because it shows that. You cannot expect this in general. Well, and then we move on with X1. So these are all on P1, yeah? This is the sequence on P1. And finally, zero. Yeah, this is just a, this. And so the main point here is that this. Now, if I'm looking what precedes, so we're interested in. We're interested in concluding that this is zero. Yeah. Um, but so what precedes it is in fact already zero. Oh. Um, so this is H one. In fact, on P one. Of E dual with, twisted with CN. But the main point here is that this E, since we're on P1 and it injects into CN, this, this E 
what decomposes is a sum of line bundles just because we're on P1 for no other reason. And these have all um, non, the degrees are, um, um, are negative or, you know, maybe in some, they can be negative or zero, right? So these di's are greater than or equal to zero, which means that in fact, if you calculate here, uh, if you take the dual, there's no H1. No? So this gives zero here. So this is zero for this reason, because E splits like this. But it wouldn't be, for example, if you look at, at the curve of higher genus, even on, if you look at an elliptic curve, or, you, you, don't, you, you don't have this conclusion. So you, you cannot expect that uh, this code scheme is, is actually smooth on a curve. It's not, but on P1 it is. So it's a good, so it's a good toy model somehow to consider because it's, it's, it's simple enough. Um, and then, you know, to calculate the dimension. So the dimension is the dimension of this group, which is chi. Okay, so you just calculate on P1. Dot genus, P1. So, this is the term character. It's just, it's just a line, uh, you know, vector bundle on the line. The F also has degree D. Yeah, so it adds up to exactly what we were saying, R times N minus R plus D times N, okay? Yeah, so, um, Right, so in fact, from this exact sequence that we, so it's smooth, okay? So it's a smooth projective, right? It comes with a universal sequence. So of course I wrote this at a point, you can write it globally, the tangent bundle to the quote scheme is, if we project, this is, these are the universal sheaves and this is the projection on, so here, um, QD cross P1 and you project to pi is the projection to QD. Okay. okay, so, but from the discussion that we had, it's also easy to see that um, in fact, a bit more strongly, we have that X1 of E1 of F2 is equal to zero for any, yeah, so there's nothing, uh, um, um, for, for any two distinct points, yeah, on the quote scheme. Um, so in that sense, X zero of E1, F2 has constant rank, yeah, for any two points of the quote scheme. Okay. Yeah, so, so then, just so let me actually I'll, I'll take one more minute and then that's it because we're we're reaching this conclusion it's a, it's a good place to stop too um so then on on a product qd times qd we can consider uh, the complex x along pi, so taking the projection along pi of E1 into F2, well, let's call this W in this case. So here the situation is as follows that this projection is, so you have two copies of the code scheme and each comes with a universal, this is the universal subsheaf on the first and this is the universal quotient on the second. Yeah, and pi is just the projection to QD times QD. And, you know, again, just as before, if you think 
for a second, there is exactly the same picture that we have for the Grassmannian. There is a tautological, oh, sorry. Sorry. Wrong. So, so we have, so then we have this. Hmm. We have this W, which is on QD cross QD, this X complex. In fact, it's just a vector bundle, yeah, as we. Um, and there's, as before, there is exactly in the same manner, there's a tautological sequence sigma. And we conclude as before, because the rank of the bundle W is precisely right, yeah, is. is is equal to the co-dimension of the diagonal. This, this sigma vanishes exactly along the diagonal. So we conclude as before that um, the diagonal is the top churn class, which would be this one of W. Okay. So, so you uh, it admits this representation as well. And does it split? Is this uh, does it split into Yes, and maybe we'll, we'll see this also next time. So maybe it's a, um, so, so I'll do a little bit, I'll take it, take it up next time, I'll do a little calculation here, but in fact, I, I have gotten started and I'll discuss this a bit more generally in moduli, on other moduli spaces uh, next time before we move on. So I think it's a good time to, to stop and I apologize, most of the discussion was taken by the, by the abelian variety, but um, yeah, we, you know, so hopefully, hopefully it was okay. Um, so yeah, let me stop sharing and maybe see if there are. Thank you very much. I apologize. I, uh, you know, I apologize. I went over the, the time. Um, so these are, I mean, this is uh, sort of a kind of easy in some sense, but it, it, it gives you some results which are not, not completely trivial, rather effortlessly for the code scheme. As we'll see, we'll see some consequences next, uh, next time. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for listening to this. So, I'll, I'll I'll see you I'll see you next time and uh, yeah. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you. Ciao. Bye.